Importing a CSV file into Access is just about as easy as importing an Excel workbook as we just learned in the previous training video. And I got an example here of a CSV file. You can see it's table or tbl booksales.csv. Now this .csv is called an extension. It actually tells the operating system Windows Vista what program this file should be opened up in. For example, the uh, computers.xlsx opens up in Excel. .accdb opens up in Access. Now, by default, you won't see these extensions because Windows Vista has them turned off or is hiding them. Because if you delete these extensions, this icon that relates to the program that this file should be opened up in will turn into something white because Windows Vista can't figure out what program to open it up in, so it just gives you a blank white little icon. When you double click on it, it says what? What program do you want me to open up in? So if you want to be able to view these, show them, or even hide them, you want to watch my Windows Vista Level 1 training video. I go over that a little bit more in depth there. But to keep it simple here, we're going to go ahead and import our booksales.csv file. Again, CSV is comma separated value. Now what's interesting is that Excel, you can see a little green icon here, wants to open up this comma separated value file as the default program. So when I double click on it, it opens up Excel. However, if I right click on this file and choose to open it with another program like Notepad, you can see here that it's got the field separated by a comma, like order ID has a comma separating it from the next field, sales date, comma, part number, and so on. So in the first row, the first field is order ID. In the second row, the first field is 1, 3rd, 2, 4th, 3. So hope you can see where I'm getting at here is that the order ID, the first field, is going to be the column label for the first column, which includes the first field in the second row, the second field in the second row, and so on. So sales date here would be the second field in the first row, the second field in the second row, second field in the third row, and so on. So when I close out of here and I double click and I open up book sales, and by default it wants to open up in Excel, it can already figure this out. It can say, look, I can separate these fields by sales here and know that the first field in the first row is going to be the label for the first column, and the first field in the second row is still going to be in that first column here again first field. All the first fields are here, all the second fields, third fields, and so on. In fact, I'll go ahead and double click really fast in between the column headers B and C so I can do an auto fit for the sales date so you can see that. Now to import this I'm going to go ahead and close out of the CSV file and say no I don't want to save it. I have down on my taskbar minimize my access database, open it back up, and there you can see the computer's table that we imported from an Excel workbook in the previous training video. Now to import the CSV file. Come up here and click on the external data tab to the import group and it's not going to be Excel. Now I know what you're thinking because the little icon was green and it defaulted the CSV file to Excel. This button here when you click on it only looks at the extensions .xlsx or xls, okay, Excel files. Even though the CSV file wanted to open up in Excel, it's still a separate extension. So we're going to look at the text file import here. Click on it and I'll show you what I mean. First of all, it says specify the location of the CSV file. Watch what happens when I click on the Browse button. Down below, you see where it says Text Files. It's got the extension .txt in. Oh, there it is, .csv, comma, separated value, which we wouldn't have gotten when we clicked on the Excel button, so that's why I didn't do that. Okay, just a little twist here. Of course, it's on the desktop, the CSV file, my exercise folder. Double-click on that, and there it is. Double-click on that, points the address right to it, and we want to import it. We don't want to add it to another table here, like the computers table, and we don't want to link it. Go ahead and click OK. It starts the import text wizard. Next, we're talking about delimiters. A delimiter is a character like comma, semicolon, space, a tab, and what's separating these fields are delimiters. In this case, it's a comma delimiter, referring it to it as a CSV file, comma, separated values. It's actually separating the values here, and it's referred to as a delimiter, a character, like it says, comma, tab, separating each field click Next, and we want to define if it is a comma or space or something else. If it was something else like a semicolon and there were semicolons, you'd see them broken up into columns. But because there are none, it's not breaking up into a column because it doesn't see any semicolons. They're all commas. Look how nice and organized that is. Order ID, sales date, part number. Next thing is, is that I don't want to be able to mix the column labels in with the data down below. So I need to check the box that the first row contains field names the names of each column, the order ID. So it pulls it out and it puts it into a header row here. Click Next, and then it wants to see if we want to be able to change the name of the fields, like instead of order ID, I can call it something else, just the ID field, delete order. Uh, the data type for that field, click on the drop down arrow, we can be long integer, just integer. Now we don't have any auto numbers here, so we can have it automatically automated for us. And the reason why is because, again, this has got its own data there. But what I'm thinking here is the order ID is a unique field. 
So I may want to set that as my primary key. In any case, I can do it within the wizard or just wait until after the wizard and then open up this table in design view and make the changes there. Data type for the sales date is date and time. In any case, I'm pretty happy with what I see here. I'll click next. And then it wants to add or choose a field that's going to have no duplicates. Do you want to allow access to add a primary key? It adds a generic field over here called the ID field with the data type auto number. 123456. Well, I already have the order ID, 123456, but the difference between the two is that this is limited in that when I add a new record, like when I scroll down to the bottom here, for the order ID it have to type in number 25, whereas if I actually let Access add a field here, add a primary key field here with the auto number data type, when I create a new record, it'll automatically type in 25 for me. So, you know, for laughs, I'll just go ahead and import the order ID. Once I import it, I can delete it and then rename this column here the order ID. I mean, we've got the same numbers here, just that this one's automated here. It'll add the number for me. I don't have to type it in. And you can choose your own primary key field. Again, it could be order ID if you want to manually type it in. And maybe your order ID is so unique, it's not automatically numbered here that you want to be able to choose your own field here and choose order ID, but no, I want access to add it. You could say no primary key and then later on go into the design view and choose a field if you're not ready for it now, but I'm ready. Go ahead and click next. And there we go, there's a TBL book cells, uppercase T, I can lowercase it to TBL book cells, and then click finish. Do I want to save this? No, we already learned how to save imports, I'm fine with that, click close. And that's in the previous training video, saved imports. Let's take a look at it, book cells, double click, open it up, there we go. We have the auto number field, the order ID, which is the same number here, so all I have to do is delete that column here. I can click on it to select it, hit the delete key on the keyboard, and say yes, I want to go ahead and permanently delete this say yes I want to do it anyways so there we go and then I can just rename this double click here and call it order ID hit enter and we're good to go now it's an auto number field so when I add a new record and I come down here and click on new record I don't have to type it in that field I can just come over here and type in the rest of the information this will automatically add it for me because this field has the data type auto number sales date part number everything looks great Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.